Ladies and gentlemen, if I could watch a video seven years ago on what it takes to be a multi-millionaire, this video would be it. Now, there's a lot of fluff out there on the internet, but here is my honest advice on what's helped me get to $10 million to my name by the age of 21. And by the way, that's not net worth, that's liquid between my investments and my cash reserves. Now, over the last seven years, I've been immersed in the world of self-development. And over the last five years of running my business, I've tried absolutely everything under the sun. And today I'm going to share the most powerful seven habits with you. And I think there's going to be quite a few in here that are going to shock you. Now, the first habit that made me a multimillionaire by the age of 21 is reading. And I know this sounds super cliche. Trust me, we're about to get onto some ones that will shock you. But honestly, if there's one thing that I can credit to my success, it's, it's the fact that from the year of 2014 to 2017, I read a book every single week. Knowledge. Because ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, there is no medium that's as powerful on earth as books. And by the way, I don't care who you are, you should be reading. And I don't care what medium you read in. You know, there's some people who prefer audiobooks these days. For me personally, it goes in through one ear and straight out through the other. And I don't care where you get your books from. I remember back in 2016, I would always used to vlog Sundays when I would go to Brixton Bookmongers in London, which was my favorite bookstore, because rather than buying something at Waterstones for 15 pounds, I could get something used that barely didn't even look like it was used for two, three pounds at Brixton Bookmongers. And if you can't even afford to spend two, three pounds on a book, just borrow one from a friend or go to the library. Because one of the most powerful things I actually found about reading at that time, you know, when you haven't, I guess in the material world, you haven't accrued an insane amount of success or because one of the most powerful things about reading at that time or at that stage of my self-development was the fact that I had what's known as Zen beginner's mind. You know, for me, everything was new and I didn't have any ego attached to executing on the stuff that I was learning about, right? A book would tell me, hey, meditate. So I started meditating. A book would tell me, hey, start journaling. So I'd start doing that. A book would tell me, you know, to do these self-development tricks and I would just execute, you know, without really thinking. Whereas, uh, unfortunately, one of the things that I think still gets in my way to this day when it comes to reading is my ego, right? Because I'll read a book and I'm more selective about what I choose, which I guess is a good thing as well, because, you know, I pick out the bits that I resonate with and I think would slot well into my life. Whereas back then when I first started reading, for me, it was just like, Okay, book says do this, so just execute, almost like a blindfully execute. And, and look, if you pick the right books, that strategy can be extremely powerful. So that is habit number one. I don't care how you read, but when you are first getting started on your business, your entrepreneurial, or maybe even just your career path, you have to read books. To me, that's a non-negotiable. Now, there might be times later down the line, this year, an example of it, you know, where you don't really read that much because you know exactly what you need to do. You know exactly what you need to execute on. And you're in a phase of your life where it's more about doing rather than learning. Now, the second habit that I want to talk about was getting into the routine of acquiring a high income skill. Now, my first ever business was flipping Instagram accounts. And through this process, I learned not only social media growth, but also copywriting. So I'm actually going to get Tristan put up on the screen. There's an account called Fakuk the Norm, like FCUK, because obviously I couldn't use the actual word. Uh, and if you look back for right from the beginning all the way to, I'd say, probably 20 posts uh, before they kind of stopped posting, that was me. Like I, I wrote that. That was my account back in 2014. And that account, the way that I got into flipping Instagram accounts was someone messaged me offering to buy it. And eventually I sold that account, but that was only later down the line. And through that world, I got uh, added into Telegram groups and started this whole process of buying, flipping accounts, selling promotions, et cetera, et cetera. And it was very short lived. That business only lasts around nine months. But my point is through that business, I learned copywriting. So if you guys ever wonder why I'm such a good copywriter, as I said, go look at that account and go look at 2014. And that's a 14 year old E-man copywriting does. And by the way, that ties into habit number one of reading books, because I was reading books, expanding my vocabulary, you know, and, you know, on Evernote, I had my little uh, lexicon library where I would write down new words that I was learning. And then I was learning a high income skill in terms of copywriting, social media growth. And as I said, after that business finished, I actually ended up learning videography in 2016. And that's how I got my first social media marketing client. And that was back in 2016. And for the next 18 months, my agency was exclusively a creative agency. You know, these days for the past three years, we're an advertising agency. We made the pivot in early 2018. But really what I'm trying to get at here is hopefully you can see how those three skills, copywriting, social media growth, and then also uh, creative stuff, right? So learning photo and video, those three high income skills came together to form my creative agency. And that's how I was a 17 year old pulling in 
$25,000 a month from my agency. It was me marrying those three skills up. And really all I can say to you is, is even if you don't know how a high income skill will help you in the future, just learn it regardless. You know, one thing I wish I had learned was uh, coding. You know, if I could go back, that's one high income skill that I would learn. Because as I said, when I was a 14 year old running that Instagram account and really all, for me, that was just cathartic, right? Because I never really fit in in school. So that was a way for me to almost have like a, a diary for myself and, and connect with people who I resonated with, even though, you know, as I said, like I wasn't public or anything like it was all under that account. So as I said, at, at that time, I never could have thought that that would aid me seven years later running an advertising agency. Like, you know, you never really know these things, which is why if you're just getting started with your career, your business, whatever it may be, learn these high income skills because I guarantee they're going to be useful later down the line. Now, speaking of high income skills, I just want to go ahead and remind you that down below, there's actually a link to my free Facebook group. Now, bear in mind, we are extremely selective of who we let into this group. So it's only for existing agency owners. But if you're an agency owner and you want to speak with me once a week, I go live every Thursday. And in fact, last Thursday, my CMO, Danny, went live because I've been very, very busy with work recently. Another thing that we did was actually got one of my performance marketers, Luis, at my agency to type up a six page report on what we're doing at our agency to combat the iOS updates. And we just gave that away entirely for free within the Facebook group. So just a heads up, that link is in the description if you want to hone in your high income skills and really sharpen the saw as an agency owner. Now, the third habit that made me a multimillionaire by 21 is building an abundance mindset, because the thing is, most people haven't prepared their vessel as in yourself for the blessings that are going to come their way or could come their way. Because here's the issue. You may have your foot on the gas, but you also have your foot on the brake at the same time. You are your biggest enemy. And the, and the issue is that most of the time this isn't even conscious to you. And this is really where going back to habit number one, the books help a lot because, you know, if you look in movies, uh, you know, wealthy people are made out to be evil. <laughs> you know, uh, wealthy people look like they've uh, stepped on other people's heads to get to where they need to be. And, you know, sometimes this is the case, right? Also, I, the other thing I find is it depends industry to industry, but for the most part, right? And I've also find that sometimes this can be the case with old money, you know, where it's passed down money, like they haven't earned it themselves. But honestly, pretty much everyone I've met who has made their own money, right? Who is self-made. They understand that money is simply a transfer of value, right? That's that's what money is. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, you've developed a product or a service. And the thing is, in order to build a successful business, you have to provide value to the market. So that's just a little side tangent, really just to say that most of the conditioning that you're given, maybe even in college or school or by your friends, is that you know rich people are evil or uh, you know they have to uh, sacrifice their ethics to get there. That's not the case. I, I found personally with self-made entrepreneurs. And that might be something that's looping in your mind and holding you back, but it's unconscious. Have you ever noticed how some people work so, so hard, yet they don't seem to get results? And there's some people who it almost looks as if it's effortless for them. It's because the people that work hard and don't yield results, usually it's simply down to the fact that they haven't done the internal work. They don't believe that they're worthy of wealth. And a lot of times they don't believe that there's an abundance of wealth out there. And ladies and gents, this isn't some raw, raw motivational stuff. It really comes down to you attract what you are. And, and, and if you haven't already, I implore you to look into quantum physics. And, you know, I'm not talking about like some uh, the book, The Secret, you know, just very shallow surface level stuff. Try to challenge yourself and read books like Reality Transurfing, which can be quite a quite a heavy hitter. I read that book when I was 15 and it was life changing. Speaking of life changing, the next habit is meditating every single day. I honestly believe that half of building wealth is maintaining emotional homeostasis, right? That you can maintain and manage your emotions through thick and thin. And, you know, even if you look at the cryptocurrency market or the stock market, really all it is to me is a transfer of emotion, right? One person makes money, the other person loses money. And all it is, is who can have the best long term view of the market, obviously, number one, but number two, who can control their emotions the best simple as and meditation is simply observing your thoughts. When you meditate, you also start to realize why you do certain things and you start to understand that your thoughts are not you, right? So as I said, when you meditate, you'll start to realize like things that you eat. Why do you eat them? What's the trigger for it? You start to realize that habits that you have, why are those habits? Right. You start to understand uh, even in terms of like your spending habits. Right. You'll start to realize that you do things or say things or act in certain ways. Right. And it's not conscious. It's unconscious. And you start to realize what are the triggers that are causing that? And what's the deeper reason behind why you do what you do? And, and, and by the way, as I said, I'm not talking about some motivational jargon. I'm literally talking about like what is the trigger, let's say, when you have a good month in your business 
and you find a way to spend all of it. Like, wh why do you do that? By the way, guys, we all have things to work on, stuff that's conscious, not conscious. And, and meditating for seven years has really helped me hone that in. So quite simply, if you want to have a wealthy life, you need to be in control of your motion and your thoughts. Meditation is key. The fifth habit is stacking high value skills. Now, notice there's a difference between high value and high income skills. A high income skill is things like I talked about, you know, copywriting, sales, um, uh, learning uh, content creation, um, things that I talked about before, programming. These are all high income skills. These are things that you can get compensated for as a service provider or as an entrepreneur, even in your career very generously for. But the thing is about those, they're quite easy to uh, quantify and they're quite visceral, right? When I say high value skills, I'm talking about something that's still so important, but you don't necessarily get paid directly for it. Let me give you an example. For me, over the years, and really I can credit, in terms of business, I can credit probably around 70% of my success, honestly, to my team. And I'm not saying that because it's the nice thing to do. Like genuinely, like as a lot of you guys know, I have multiple businesses and I don't recommend that for everyone. And, and if I didn't have the senior people by my side, so for example, at my agency, that's Danny, my CMO, at my education company, that's Kieran, at my software company, which I've been working on for a long time and you guys will find out about that soon enough, I'm sure. That's the only business where I have a business partner. I could not manage, like if I didn't have these people in place, I would have to choose just one. There's no human on earth that can manage that much complexity without having someone in a senior position who can run a lot of the company and the day to day operations for them. So that's an example right there of a high value skill. I'm incredibly, incredibly good at going out there, finding, convincing, attracting talent, and then also keeping them with me for years and years and years because of the mission and my companies, because of the compensation, because of the performance bonuses, a whole myriad of different reasons. But that is a high value skill. It's not something that I necessarily get paid for directly, but it's probably been the biggest reason for my success in my businesses. Honestly, I can give you another example of a high value skill, and that is accounting and managing cash flow. As I said, that's not something you get paid for or compensated for directly. But between my businesses, if I couldn't manage cash flow, if I couldn't do my own accounting, even though I have a very expensive bookkeeper and accountant, if I couldn't read my own PL, if I couldn't understand my cash flow, if I couldn't understand for some of my businesses what our run rate is. As I said, my agency is my cash flow business, the thing that pays for my lifestyle and also lets me put a lot of money into my investment portfolio, but my other businesses have m literally millions of R&D costs associated to them. And I don't see that flip over in revenue for years. So I need to understand things like what is my run rate with these businesses? How long can I pour money into research and development before we can start recouping some of that money? That's a concept that I need to understand very, very well. And my e-commerce brand, Gadgie. like when, when I order a new stock for our eyewear, the Gadget G1, the blue light blockers, it takes three months just to restock. If I want to develop a new model and then stock it, it takes five months. So cash flow is extremely important in a business like that. But as I said, you need to focus on these high value skills after you build the high income skills. The high income skills come first because you need to get paid, you need to bring revenue in, you need to make money. And then later you build up a habit of collecting all of these high value skills that are going to serve you more long term. The next habit that I want to talk about is focus on character rather than income. Over the last five years, I've always thought, who do I need to become in order to make the sort of money that I want to make? Not what uh, tactic or trick or this or that do I need to uh, do I need to implement to help my business grow? Because that stuff all comes naturally. Like that stuff will come to you when you focus on the character. And let me give you an example right here of how I definitely shot myself in the foot over the last five years. And I think this has a lot to do with obviously my age, you know, making a lot of money very early on, especially after you drop out of high school, especially after like what I went through in high school, especially with the amount of people berating me, like making fun, like high school was not exactly middle school and high school was definitely not a fun place for me to be. So between that and dropping out of my high school, for sure, I had a chip on my shoulder. And once again, this is where the meditation ties in. I think if I had less of an ego over the past five years, and I think really, I think really it's only been like probably the last year, maybe a year and a half where I've really dialed in my ego and I've really been able to make good long term choices and really remove my ego from a lot of decisions I'm making. And, and I know some people might look at my YouTube or Instagram and be like, oh, you're very egotistical. You share this and that. And guys, that's that's me sharing. I also shared when I was 15 years old and broke and 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 going to the gym and filming me in the gym and talking about my workout routine and then meditation and, and in 2016 my goal to make 15,000 pounds that year and how I was so far off but I was visualizing and like go back to 2016 you can watch my videos like that was me authentically sharing and then I feel as though probably between like 2017 to like early 2020 a lot of that was just yes sharing but a lot of it was ego based as well and the thing is when you make 
decisions based on ego. And honestly, I think that held me back for so long until probably the last year, year and a half ago. And the reason I say this is because I want to make it clear that you might have like you, you may think that to get from where you are to the next point in your business, you have to do, you know, there's some t a trick or tactic or this or that or strategy that you need to implement in your business. A lot of times it's, it's a character trait that you need to develop. And I know, for example, for me to go from 10 million to 25 million to my name after tax, and that's my next target to do that by 25. I know some things that are really important for me is punctuality. I'm a person who's notoriously late. Uh, takes weeks and weeks to respond uh, unless it's Slack and it's my team or my clients. And I know for me to go to where I am right now to where I need to get to, I'm really going to have to work on my punctuality because at the end of the day, yes, I'm busy. I'm extremely busy, but that's not that's no excuse. When you're not punctual, you're breaking a promise to yourself as well as the other person that you're holding up. When you're not punctual, you, at the end of the day, you're breaking a promise to yourself. Another thing that I'm going to have to work on, and I've talked about this slightly already, is humility. As much as especially I feel over the last year, I've done a lot of work on that. There's still a hell of a lot of a way to go. And and I know, as I said, that comes with age as well. And the last thing is gratitude. I feel as though that's something that I've really lost over the last two, three years. Sometimes things can feel so stale. I become so numb to certain things. But gratitude, if I want to get to that next point in my life, that's something I'm going to need to work on. So, ladies and gentlemen, you might be watching me right now and going, you know, this person's a few steps ahead of where I am right now. But you can see even in my position, I'm already looking at the next goal and not thinking what tactical, you know, what tactic or strategy or this or that do I need to, because that's going to come naturally, right? That's, I usually find is the easy bit. When you work on your character and you work on yourself, that's 80% of the equation because then you're in a good place. And I find that uh, the star is just naturally in line and things come to you and you're ready for it. So always focus on who you need to become in order to reach your goals, not on what tactic or trick to use. The last habit that helped me become a multimillionaire by the age of 21 was investing. Honestly, I can't stress this enough to you. Get in the habit of investing as soon as you can, even if it's just $50 a month. And by the way, everyone, I don't care what you say. Everyone has $50 a month as long as you're an adult and you have income. Because ladies and gentlemen, it compounds in ways you couldn't even imagine. Now, now I made a lot of mistakes along my journey, but the one thing that I did well was by the age of 21, having a few million to my name pretty much after tax. But really what took me from a few million at the age of 20 to a decamillionaire by the age of 21 was investing. And honestly, I think that if I had started investing at 18 rather than 20 because of, you know, m the nature of my cash flow business, as well as the fact that my other businesses, even though I'm plowing so much money into R&D and I will see that flip over in revenue one day or very soon, actually, luckily, those businesses are still self-sustaining. So like they're at a break even or a slight profit. But as I said, if I had to start investing because I have a good cash flow business at the age of 18 rather than 20, I think I'd probably have an extra honestly, maybe five, five to $20 million to my name at the age of 21, which is nuts. Ooh, wow. And guys, to me, honestly, I think that investing is the only true passive income out there. Honestly, as, as, as much as people want to state, you know, as passive income, this, that, yes, it may be passive, but you need to understand that, um, you know, entropy will always kick in. And, you know, I've even seen it like, uh, you know, people talk about affiliate marketing all the time as passive income. And there's, and there's literally softwares out there that pay me 15 grand a month. And I've seen in the space of a year, how it can go from 15 to eight, you know, to me, I don't care. But if it was my only income, losing half my income in the space of a year, because I haven't talked about a software that much recently, like that would sting. And to me, that's not real passive income. Real passive income is your investments and seeing that kind of very slowly grow and compound year on year on year. And the other really beautiful thing about investing is it keeps your lifestyle in check. Because the thing is, for me, there was no real lifestyle difference when my agency went from 30 grand a month to 100 grand a month. Right. Like it's almost and, and you get to a stage where you're almost like, cool, of course, I can scale up this business more. But like, what does that tangibly do for me? And now that or the space uh, over the space of the last year, I've gotten heavy into investing for me. Now, I literally take depending on the month and the state of the businesses anywhere from 50 to 7 percent of my income. And I put that into investments. And to me, that's exciting to see my pot grow. And, and as I said, for me personally, you know, the number that I feel as though at that point, I'd be like, I can not only retire, but retire and live a baller lifestyle and literally live and literally spend like four times as much money as I spend now, probably five or six times as much money as I spend now but would be if my investment portfolio got to 25 million by the age of 25, which is my next goal. So for you, if you can start to plan out. And by the way, I remember I was 16 and I read Money Master the Game and my my pot, you know, my goal uh, amount that I needed was actually two million dollars. And that was the amount that I needed, not for like the, my most extravagant lifestyle, but like uh, my very good. Com I, I forget what Tony actually said in the book, but for my very good, comfortable lifestyle. And I've done pretty much five times that amount by the age of 21. 
right? So for you, maybe your amount is literally, I just need to get to a million dollars in my investment portfolio. And there we go. There's my life paid for basically for the rest of my life through my investments. And then anything I make for my businesses, then I live off of. And that's kind of the cool bit of where I've gone to now. Yes, I have my businesses and my investment stuff. I don't, it's not like I keep the principal and then any of the additional income I make from it, I take out and I live off of. No, I just know how much my investment portfolio makes me monthly. And now that has actually become my budget. And I've actually like really enjoyed budgeting. Like I think that's, it's been incredible because it also gives me way more gratitude in my life. And it's, I don't know, you just have more appreciation for things when you have like a budget and, and you know, you don't go to a restaurant, you don't go to shop and your budget is infinite because you've gone to a point where you make so much money that it, basically there's no, there's not much that's out of your reach financially. But as much as I say all of this, the main focus that you should have is to get to 10,000 a month before you get to, you know, until you get to 10,000 a month, you shouldn't really be focusing on investing or thinking that investing is going to get you to where you want to get to. Definitely again, the habit of just putting it, you know, a dollar cost averaging, just a small amount each month into, you know, any sort of asset class, whatever it is that you want, but you have to build up your business first. Your business is going to make you rich, but your investments will make you wealthy long term. And also understand that it is far easier to go from, let's say, 10K a month with your business to 30K a month in your business than to have that same growth through your investment portfolio. Like that could take you a decade, right? So also understand your business should always come first. It's always the most important thing. And, and you might get to a stage where I am right now, where honestly, for me, my investment portfolio is my most important thing. Like it's my, like I'd say for me, it's definitely my biggest asset. So ladies and gentlemen, those are the seven habits that made me a multimillionaire by the age of 21. Now, down in the description, you'll be able to find the winner for the Gadget giveaway. For any of you guys who are new here, I give away one pair of blue light blockers, which actually sell for over, I think converting from pounds of like $120. And I actually give those away entirely for free every single video. So you'll find the Gadget giveaway winner down in the description. And what I want you to do is out of the seven habits, which habit do you think is the most important? Comment down below and you'll be automatically entered to win a pair of Gadget G1 blue light blockers. And the winner will be announced as always in the next video in the pin comments. And apart from that, make sure you go ahead and join the free Facebook group. I'm gonna be going live again this week for free, just kicking it for an hour. And on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next video. Look, if you enjoyed that video, I went ahead and picked out another special video that I know you're gonna find immensely valuable. You can find it right there. I know you're gonna love it and I'll see you in the next one.